So when you first open up Storbo Pro, this is the screen that you're going to see. And you've got different areas here. You can set up a new project in this area here. You can open up any of your recent projects, or I can open up an existing project that's not in my recent list. The documentation down here, this is the, some of the help files. Let's take a look at some basics here under new project. The project directory, this is where it's going to be saved. Now, I do a lot of different types of artwork, so I always have my graphics folder, and then a folder underneath that I will have project board projects. So that will come up here. Now for project name, I can call it Mark. Let's do a title as well. And then I can select the resolution. Now, NTSC is only 720 by 540 pixels. Now here's something, something to think about. This software is vector software. When you're drawing, it's a vector line, which is resolution independent. You can zoom in or out as much as you want. However, the resolution is important for however you export when you're going out to movies or to print, like, such as bitmap or PDF. Now, NTSC is too small for it to be good output on print. So I always do either film or high def resolution. We I did a film recently, it was 235, which is ultra wide screen. So for this instance, I would start in as high def, and here you can see the width, the height, 1920 by 1080. You can always adjust your FPS as frames per second. You can adjust that whenever you want. In this case, we're going to open up an existing piece, L and R. It's from a pilot that I produced last year called Luke and Reese Save the World. And you can see that in this case, I already have uh, the, I drew this on a timeline, which you can see down the bottom, which I can scrub through. And I want to give you, show you what I mean when I was talking about resolution independent for drawing. Here you see a character jumping down in the foreground. There's a character in the background. Now, I can zoom in on this character in the background as much as I want. And notice the quality, line quality stays the same no matter how close I get. So we never have the pixelation that you would have if you were working in any type of bitmap like Sketch or Photoshop. Now, a quick way to get back to seeing your full drawing screen is Shift-M, as in Mary, and it takes me right back to my full drawing screen. In just a moment, we'll get into the best ways on actually drawing and making use of this. So let's take a look at the different areas on the main screen once we get into one of our files that we're going to be working with, and I'll show you the different ways you can look at the product uh, project that you're working on, as well as different ways that you can adjust and customize your interface here. So there's a number of different overall views. The first view here, down below, you will see thumbnails of your drawings. Of course, you've got your large drawing area here. I prefer using the timeline because I do the real-time animatics as I work. It literally makes me a better board artist. I can, I'll lay in my scratch tracks underneath, and I can actually see the timing and if my boards are telling the story I want to tell. Very important. If you want to look at an entire sequence, you can use this and literally just see many, many panels all at once. The bigger screen you have, the more panels you'll see there. Or you also have different ways of looking at it as if it would turn out in print, like the landscape. For instance, if you're doing a PDF export, this is the way animation boards are usually printed out. Live action are often vertical. So this way you can scroll through the entire thing. If I had dialogue or action notes, you would actually see them in these boxes here. Let's just go back to the basics of what I prefer, which is the timeline. Any one of your tools here that you choose, let's say if I'm on my brush, your tool properties drop down tab over here allows you to adjust any element of that. The panel gives you the numbering, the scene number or shot number if you're using live action, and panel number. I can, uh, I can see what the duration is, or I can adjust it here. There's a couple of ways to adjust it that we'll get into in a bit. I can record a voice annotation if I'm giving a note to someone. I can type in any amount of dialogue or action notes, anyone here, that will come out whenever we set it out to print to PDF. As far as customizing, there's little handholds where I can actually grab any one of these elements, these menus, and move them around. I can pull it out so it would be a standalone. I can take it and drop it right back in. I can also right-click 
on any of these and I can set up which ones like let's say I really like navigation so let's make sure we put navigation up here as well or if I right click over top of a menu I can customize it and any elements like so, ooh, let's say split current scene I actually have to do that relatively often so I'm going to select that move it over to the right apply and now here it is so I can actually split a scene say if I've got a long shot and I'll split it up and put another shot in between I now can click on it right here and very quickly do what I need to do so navigation and setting up the interface is very very quick and easy here's another little thing that one of my favorite things here's the default on your layers background A and B now I tend to break up my foreground and background I like to have tone or color on a separate layer most of the time I also like to do roughs I also like to be able to be able to write in notes or draw in arrows and dictate what moves what doesn't move what shows up on a PDF what shows up on a movie I have full control over that but I don't want to have to set up every layer every time I open this up it's easy enough to add layers over here on the left I can add as many layers as I want every time I click on it if I want to rename one I double click on the letter and say I could call that foreground, select OK, there it is. It's easy to renumber or rename any of these. But I don't want to have to do that for every frame. So what I've set up here is an example. This is the way I like to do it. Arrows, notes, text. I like to have, be able to put text on different file. Foreground, ink. This could be midground, this could be pencil. I call it ink just because of my throwback to the old days of storyboarding color underneath that if I want, background, and my rough layer. So for this to come up every time, I simply go to layer, set layer layout as default, and now when I hit new scene, if you notice, these layers pop up named exactly the way I want anytime, every time. Really a huge, huge time saver. You can reset this anytime you want as you're working. I'll often select rough and then set layer again so now when I make a new one rough is already highlighted so now when I keep sketching I'll make a new one and I'll keep sketching this is great now here's another great little tip for you as well as far as the layout this button over here is a button that's very important this is your automatic light table keep that turned on if you're if you draw a lot digitally at all probably in Photoshop you have probably found that you often will draw on the wrong layer and then have to go back and fix it or delete all the work that you did well they've made it really easy to make sure in this program that you don't do that any layer that you draw on is the layer that's highlighted so if I click on rough you see that my lines are nice and black now if I go to my ink layer oh the rough layer grays out so now I can come in And if I go back to my rough layer, oh, notice that my ink layer grays out. So I always know what layer I'm on automatically as I'm working. Huge, huge time saver. All right, let's look at some of our drawing tools here really quickly. A lot of you like working on or are used to working on animation stands. So this is a rotary table on here. And you simply hit Control and Alt or Command and Alt. And it allows me to rotate my drawing around any way that I want. I often don't use that. I actually drawing on a Cintiq. I'll just turn the Cintiq as I'm working, but it makes it nice and easy for you. I like the brush. Now under tool properties, I can adjust that. This is a pretty neat thing that they've adjusted here. This means the smallest pixel, if you press lightly, this is how thick the line will get. So as I'm drawing, look at that beautiful line. So that's my basic brush. They also there's presets on brushes and they have a number of texture brushes and the texture brushes give you obviously a texture pattern as you can see right there you can also make your own one of the things that I like to do is I like to make a good solid brush that's got a really nice soft edge to it and I'm going to show you really quickly the best way to handle that I made in Photoshop a black square 100 pixels by 100 pixels save it as a Photoshop file a dot PSD and that's all it's just a black square 100 pixels by 100 pixels 
this pencil line with a plus next to it, add new brush. And I'm going to enable the texture because this will be a texture brush. And I'm going to click on this little box over here under the word texture. That will open up and allow me to now go and look for where that brush is. Here it is, black brush. I'll open that. And now I can adjust whatever settings I want. The small to relatively large pixel width. And now it's a very beautiful smooth line. I can adjust my color at any time simply by going over to the color tab, grabbing a new color, and I can even save a number of brush presets so I can get to them easily. The cutter, if you hold down on your select arrow icon over here, you can go to cutter and it allows me to literally cut out a piece of this and move it. So I want to, oh, let me get to the right, if I want to take this guy just his nose, even though it was part of one solid line, I can move it somewhere else, reuse it, whatever I need to. Kind of a neat thing to be able to do. Text, pretty simple. You can lay it in there. I can adjust the text. I can skew the text any direction that I want. I can skew it this direction if I want. I can adjust anything I need to. And again, the Tool Properties tab allows me to adjust what font I want it to be. And I can set most of the settings that you can with any other program. It works a lot like Photoshop as far as that goes. Now, Dynamic Brush is a fun is a fun thing to be able to play with. So what I want to be able to do, let's say I have an army of this little kid right here. So let's make a brush of him so I can repeat him over and over. This works really great for crowd scenes. So I'll select that character. Select my brush. And then this middle icon right there will be new dynamic brush. I'll select that, and boom, there's my brush. You can see the character. I can scale it as much as I want, so I can make them big or small. So when I go in my drawing area, every time I click, I can make him smaller. Like he's going down in the background. I can make him much bigger if he's up close. Very quick and easy way to, to draw with anything. We'll do the same thing with leaves or trees. Uh, scratch marks of grass simply by making a dynamic brush out of it. And I can rename I can rename that brush. Rename him Ninja if I want to. So now when I look at my list, I'll see Ninja down on the bottom. I can go back to my regular brush, or I can go to my textured brush that you and I built just a moment ago. This one right here. One of the things I also like to be able to do as I'm working. Shift M recenter this is let me grab a black color is effect transparency. Let's say if I've got a background and then on another layer, let's say I've got a ghost. And I want that ghost to be transparent. You've got a window here with all your layers. You can see thumbnails of your arrows by using that little double arrow. Keep, collapse it or keep it open. If you keep it open, you can actually see what's on that layer. Any layer that's selected, you can adjust your opacity as quickly as grabbing it and moving it up and down. If you want to compare it to the rest of your drawing, you can turn off your auto light table so all layers are shown properly. And this works with any fills that you have as well. So draw behind is a nice element. So drawing normally, if I've got a shape and I want to color, so let me grab a different color, you'll notice that I'm drawing and it covers right over the line. So let's undo that. If I go to my tool properties, this icon here is draw behind.
So now, if I draw, draw over that line, you'll notice that I'm actually coloring behind anything else that's on there. Which also means if I grab another color, the draw behind affects everything. Any color I do, I'm drawing behind that other color. Now if I turn that off back to the regular brush, now I'm going to be back on top of everything again. So draw behind can be very, very helpful, especially if I've got, for instance, a background, and then I've got on one of my foreground layers, foreground layer, I've got a ball bouncing, whatever I want. What I'll want to do is make sure I'm on draw behind, and I can quickly fill in without having to worry about covering over my line, and voila, it covers over the background layer, but it's all within this one foreground layer. I also can go over here to the paint bucket, paint, and I can also drop fill right into it, make it even quicker as long as it's an enclosed space.